This video is sponsored by Hunter Engineering. Visit hunter.com for more information. Hey guys, welcome to What's Treading. I am here in St. Louis at the Hunter Engineering facility with David Henry. David is going to show us some brand new equipment. It is the Maverick Pro. David, show us how the this has been enhanced from the Maverick Pro. Well, David, I'm super excited to show you the Maverick Pro. We're just going to run through this tire changer for you and show you some of these unique features that really blow it out of the water. I love it. So first off, we have this pick and pull wheel lift that helps us present the tire to the machine. Not only does it pick it up, but it lays it flat so we can roll that right over onto the pedestal. And this double is tap. This is brand new with the Maverick Pro. We double tap that pedal and that wheel lift just goes home out of the way. Pretty awesome. You might have saw on the other Maverick, but we have this nice clamp that has a polymer end on it that doesn't damage the wheel if you accidentally touch the face of the wheel. I didn't sure, do that. Sure. Make sure you don't tell the boss, all right? <laughs> uh, so we're going to get that nice and tight. Uh, this Maverick has got some unique features that we move the pedestal in and out to set our dimension. So we're going to bring that right into the right dimension. So right to the edge of the wheel, and that's how we're gonna set all our tools. At that point, we can start rotating. Another great feature of the Maverick Pro is that light. You might've saw the light come in on the bottom. Yep, yep. It's allowing me to position that lower roller right on the bead bundle, and I can start breaking that oh. lower bead. I like to break the lower <laughs> bead first. People do it different. I'm not saying how to do it, but I'm saying this works for me. Oh, technicians gonna are gonna that. love that. I mean, oh. it's, it's so hard to see down there. Oh, it is, and when you illuminate it, man, it's like putting a light on your life. You can get stuff done. <laughs> we're gonna open up a gap on that upper bead, and then we're gonna bring our mountain head down. We're gonna bring that mountain head down into position. And this machine, we need to watch that sensor so we don't damage the sensor. So we're gonna rotate around until we clear that sensor and insert that hook. The hook's gonna go into position. We're gonna stop the sensor, that TPMS sensor, right before the hook. It makes it nice and easy with the hydraulic controls that we can regulate it whatever speed we need to. I like to say it's as fast as we want to, but as slow as we need to to make sure we get the job done. Yeah, for sure. And we're gonna use that lower roller. The light comes on again to make sure we get a little pressure on that tire and it's gonna pull that first bead off. You'll notice I'm navigating this tire changer with my hand over here, not manipulating the tire, letting the machine do the work. And you're not manually turning that light on and off, it's doing it automatically for you. Uh, another automatic procedure, yeah, it does it by itself. Then we use the mount head to pull the tire up. Once that's up in position, we bring that lower roller up, indent it, and the tire will come off. Man, these advanced features of the Pro, and the awesome Maverick tire changers are really a game changer when we talk about the tire and wheel industry. When we're working on these big wheels and tires, these delicate ones, this is gonna allow us to do those tasks simple and effectively. We're gonna I'm, go I'm ahead impressed and, by the level of, you know, there's a lot of automation here, but also the technician still has a lot of control over what's going on. That's the big thing about the Maverick. You know, we, we made it simplified, but you have complete control. So as fast as you want to, as slow as you need to, but you can manipulate it to accomplish any task. We're gonna lube this tire and put it on for us. So we just set the tire with a gap on the bout side so we can bring that mount head down into position. With it into position, we can start rotating. I like to spin that tire over the wheel and just rotate until I see the stem or the sensor and put pressure and you'll see that bead go on. It's pretty quick and easy. This machine really is a game changer when it comes to low profile tires or a little stiffer tire. We're gonna bring that roller down to keep it underneath the mount head and then continue that around. Gonna go ahead and seat those beads on this tire changer. Another thing that's pretty unique on Hunter tire changers is the fact that we have an auto inflation, we don't have to be there. We just tell it what pressure we want and we push the button. Mm -hmm. It's pretty convenient. Absolutely. We're gonna just seat the beads here. Now for a new technician, how, how simple is this? You know, I'm, I'm day one coming in. How simple is this to learn? I'm gonna tell you the big thing with this tire changer, it closes that training gap. We still have to have a skilled technician do the job, but what we've seen in the field is if you took a basic tire changer, it might take a guy a week to be proficient with that tire changer. This tire changer with the ease of use and the controls, we can usually get somebody up to speed within days. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Okay, okay. And then that pick and pull, it's just like going on, man, it makes it a dream to take it off. We're just gonna roll that over into the cradle, double tap the pedal, and then the wheel lift goes down. That's nice, I mean, that's a lot of labor saved. Oh, a lot of labor, and we think about most wheel lifts when we pick that wheel up, 
we have to rotate with that mass and any rotation with mass is no go. You know, if you had a real heavy tire and you're trying to line yeah. up that drive oh, yeah. pin, it makes it a little more difficult. This thing, because we're using that wheel lift to pick it up and then lay that tire flat, it allows us just to pull that over and then deploy that down and line up that drive pin perfectly every time to make sure we placed it properly on the pedestal. And that drive pin, that, that's a big deal because, I mean, that, you know, I've seen technicians, it, it can be a struggle sometimes where you're, you're trying to line it up and get it, but this is so simple. Oh, be a, being able to slowly go down and manipulate that wheel so you line that drive pin up. And you're right, the drive pin is important. We think about clamping this tire to the spindle. If we're trying to track that sensor or make sure it's in a safe spot, we can't have that wheel spinning independently from that spindle. So we need that drive pin. It's important we line it up. <laughs> this new wheel lift just makes it a dream. Drop that thing right into place, lines up the pin for us. Very, very cool. David, thanks so much for bringing in Alex. He's a Hunter Engineering engineer who worked a lot on the Maverick Pro. So uh, tell us, you know, my, my eyes first go to this pick and pull system. Can you explain a little bit about the, the reasoning for, for uh, uh, changing the system from the uh, prior Maverick? Yeah, sure. So really this came from user feedback. People out in the field, they wanted a more ergonomic lift, something that took less effort for them to actually get a wheel from the ground onto the platen. And Hunter listened, we decided to design something and this is what we came up with. And then also we have the lower bead roller light. So coming from you know dimly lit shops or you might have a really dark rim, mm -hmm. having that light there illuminating that lower um, tired of rim interface with the mirror really helps to just clear things up, make it easier to see. Oh yeah, even in good lighting, sometimes it can be difficult to see, so that lighting really makes a big difference. One question I have for you, sure. so obviously the footprint of this machine, you know, it's not the smallest machine, but it's not huge, yes. you know? I mean, this is a pretty small machine relatively, and yet you were able to add these uh, different features to uh, this machine here. How do you go about making sure that these features are being added in the right place where they're gonna be most effective yeah. without you know, getting in the way of everything that's already working? Yeah, that's a great question. So really the overall footprint is defined by can we fit this thing in a demo truck? So when we designed the tire changer in general, I mean, there's a welded on bracket up the top of the machine. That's a hard limit. Depth, it also matters. It, things that go beyond the back of the machine limit how close you can get to a wall. But really at the front of the machine, we have a sliding spindle. So that's free space that we can take advantage of. And with the existing wheel lift that is an, a, a still an available option, that you know the platform lives in the front of the machine. Mm -hmm. So really, we're taking advantage of area that's already being used. And one of the cool things that I noticed as well is you know the technician they don't really have to move when they're ch mm -hmm. when you know they're using this machine. They can kind of stay in that one spot. They have all their controls yeah. over here. Um, any any new uh, controls that should uh, that a technician might need to be aware of? Well, the one would be for this lower bead roller light. Really, for it to come on, it just comes on naturally. When you trigger this lower roller, it's going to light up, as you can see. Yeah. And then it's going to also automatically shut off. And that is a feature that is configurable within the settings to where you can change the duration that that light stays on. Interesting, interesting. So let's talk about hydraulics versus air. What are the kind of pros and cons there? Yeah, so for hydraulics, I mean, you get a ton of force with a really small package. So air, you need a large diameter to get a lot of force. Hmm. We also have proportional control. So when raising and lowering arms, you can move them at extremely slow rates of speed or really fast rates of speed. We still do utilize pneumatics on this machine, such as you know, the press arm, but really it's quite minimized. All the core functions are hydraulic. Very, very interesting. Uh, does that sort of feedback, does that come from technicians coming to you and, and asking for something like that? Absolutely. I mean, techs have grown to love the revolution and that also uses proportional hydraulic control. Mm -hmm. So. Maverick also utilizes it just in a completely manual function. It's not you know, autonomous. I want to go back to something you said earlier where you want to be able to fit this machine in a mobile unit. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking f from that standpoint, we got to make sure it is X size. Mm -hmm. how, are, how are you, you know, you're, you obviously want to fit in a lot of these features that, uh, a lot of these upgrades, right? So yeah. what, what are you thinking about as far as, you know, oh, I wanna put this here, but I, I can't fit it in the truck in that, in that sense. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of considerations because ultimately it comes down to what wheels and tires doing to service. That's gonna determine how far above and below the platen I need to go. That then defines how far above the plat the tools need to raise to actually get a tire out of this machine. Mm. So really, everything is driven off of servicing this maximum, you know, width and diameter of wheel. So that really determines a lot of our sizing. 
Got it, got it. So efficiency, obviously, is, is a, a huge thing when, when it comes to engineering a machine like this. Uh, but how, how much of a factor is you know, the, the labor factor, where you know, how much constraint these technicians are putting on their own bodies? Well, with this being a leverless tire changer, I mean, it is minimal user interaction. Probably the, the most effort an operator is exerting is getting the wheel and tire onto the platen, which this wheel lift helps to minimize. So without having to use you know, levers, which um, anyone who's used a tabletop machine would be familiar, it, it's quite a bit of work to get a tire off. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, David, anything we're missing here? Man, no, he covered it pretty well, but man, this wheel lift, tell me, I know the industry is asking for a better wheel lift, a more economical, but how did you think about that table that comes up, you just pull it over. I love not being able to rotate with a mass. Tell me your thought and kind of mind process. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, I love it. It's a more complex mechanism. So from a design standpoint, it's a really cool project to have. The existing lift, I mean, it exists. I mean, it's de definitely a little bit more economical and it does the job, but this one from a just an interaction standpoint is definitely superior to use. The rollers, you know, throughout. Did you guys de design that or did you pull that from another industry part, you know, maybe you have in the plant or something? No, it's pretty cool. Conveyor a, belts? I don't know. That's a great question. We do try to minimize components and share things when possible, but everything on this actually is bespoke to this mechanism. Awesome. So we have injection, custom injection molded rollers for all of these, so it integrates wow. um, different standoffs on the other side, so just one component rather than a roller with two spacers on the other side, just so from a plant perspective, assembly, it's real easy to put together. That's awesome. And man, I saw you spin that. <laughs> Is it on bearings? It's pretty slick. Now we're just specifically chosen materials that have low coefficients of friction. Wow, because wow. I think about some of these higher, heavy tires and wheels. If we're trying to move that over, I could just see if it wasn't moving freely, we might really have to pull on it. Yeah. That thing is smooth. That's cool. Great job on that. Uh, the light. I wasn't a believer when I first saw uh, we put a light on it until you see that illuminate, man. We think about our overhead lighting in a shop illuminating everything we're doing, but what happens when you put a car over top of it or a wheel over top of it? That light is a game changer. That yeah, was a great idea. Absolutely. What, what made you think about that light? Was it something you guys saw in the field or some feedback you got? It was actually just feedback we got. People were saying it's, it's difficult to see that rim tire interface when using the mirror. So mm -hmm. techs were you know, still getting down and actually looking at that interface themselves or you know, feeling, which is, poses a danger. You don't want to get a hand in you know, where tools are moving. Sure. Yeah, and I, once I activated that and I saw that illumination underneath the wheel, it reflected through that mirror, that was awesome. It changed everything. It made it a little more efficient that I just looked down and it illuminated. I could see exactly where I was on the bead bundle. Great job. That was phenomenal. That to was me, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you hear about it and you're like, oh, that's cool. But when you're actually here, seeing it, using it, see how effective it is, you're like, oh, oh, I see. You know? <laughs> For how simple it is, I mean, it was a fun little project. Because even just the mounting bracket that it has, there's a little visor that not only keeps debris and you know, water and salt and road mm. debris getting on that, that uh, light, it also acts as a visor to keep that glare from getting in your eyes. So just making that user experience as good as it can be. That's pretty amazing. We think about putting the light down there in vulnerable spot, you know, moisture, dirt, debris, and you thought about that and you shielded it and made it durable, right? We're Absolutely. putting lights where they shouldn't be, they should be, but yep. we gotta make sure they last. It's Absolutely. Hunter yep. Engineering. Fully waterproof, IP68 rated LED. Awesome, Fantastic. LEDs, we get that bright white light and it's weather resistant, yep. perfect. That's huge, that's huge. Alex, thank you so much for your time. David, thank you. Oh, thank you, David, and thanks for coming to Hunter Engineering and checking out some of our new product. Anytime, anytime.